So I just did a video about how to build a GraphQL server that uses MongoDB. And a lot of people have been asking me to go try out Nest.js. So I thought this would be a good time to try recreating that exact same server in Nest.js and see what the experience is like. So that's what we're going to be doing. So to start off, I went ahead and just did npm i-g to globally install the nest.js CLI. Then after that, I ran the configuration to generate a project, and that is where I'm currently at. Uh, so right off the bat, you'll notice with this, nest.js uses TypeScript, so you don't need to use, for example, Babel, and they have pretty much a nice little workspace set up for you out of the box. I'd recommend just kind of like looking around and see what they give you, specifically the package.json file. So we can see they installed a couple of dependencies for us and pretty much an entire uh, dev setup for TypeScript. You'll notice we have tslint, TypeScript itself, tsnode, no daemon, all that fun stuff. Um, and then a whole bunch of scripts in here. The one I'm going to be using in this video is start dev. Um, so I already have that up and running right here. And again, this is using no daemon, so as we make changes, stuff is going to automatically reload. So I went ahead and just ran the default project that it gives you. And when you do that, if we go to localhost 3000, we should see hello world uh, and everything is working. So the first thing that I wanted to do was see how we can add GraphQL to this project to Nest.js. So there's this app.module thing over here that is kind of like the main module or introduction to our application. I guess really main is, um, but in main all we're really saying is ne nest factory create on this app module. So this is kind of the beginning or the central place. So it recommends, um, we're just going to be going following the quick start for GraphQL. So we're going to install these dependencies. GraphQL from Nest.js, Apollo Server Express, because it uses that underneath the hood. GraphQL tools and GraphQL itself. So I'm going to say yarn add and install all those things. Um, and then after that, we're going to import the GraphQL module. And this is going to be inside of app.module. And we're just going to introduce that new root module. So imports GraphQL module dot for root and we're just going to do empty object uh, for the options right now. Um, and I don't know if there's anything else. looks like we can pass some arguments into for root if we want to pass anything to Apollo server. In our case, we don't care to. Now, there's two ways that you can use GraphQL with Nest.js. You can use the schema first approach or the type first, or sorry, not type first, code first approach. Personally, I'm going to be going with the code first approach. It's the one I prefer and really would recommend you using. So we're going to install type GraphQL. And here we can specify to, uh, to create a GraphQL schema. Um, this is basically, paste that in there. This is basically just the location of the GraphQL file that we want generated uh, for our schema. That way we can see the schema in the SDL standard design language um, after we take all the type, gra type GraphQL resolvers and mash them into a schema. Um, all right, so there's really, we don't need to get into async configurations and all that fun stuff for this basic example. We're just gonna hop over to creating our first resolver in GraphQL after this setup. And again, I'm doing the code first approach under the resolvers. Um, so I'm gonna skip to the part where they have a uh, author's resolver and I'm going to copy that and start with this. So I'm going to create a new folder here which I'm going to call cats and this is basically my new I guess domain or you'd say module. So here I'm going to create a cats.resolver.ts file and I'm going to paste in my resolver here. So we're going to say cats.resolver. We're going to import resolver from nest GraphQL. I'm not going to have any type associated with the resolver yet. I'm going to com comment out the constructor. We're going to come back to that. And I'm just going to have a single simple query. 
So we'll get rid of the arguments. And we're just going to say hello here. We're just going to do a hello world. And our return type here is going to be a string. And we can import query from Nest GraphQL. Also, just a reminder for those of you that have not watched my uh, VS Code video, I'm auto importing this with command and then period. Okay, so this is the most basic type GraphQL resolver. We just have a hello query. Now I want to use this inside of the app module over here. We can create a new cats module.ts um, and we can pretty much copy what we have over here. Um, well, I don't even, we don't really technically have to copy all that stuff because we only need a portion of it. We're going to have a single provider cats resolver and we don't need any imports. All right, we don't need that. And then we can import this cats module inside our app module over here. So we're gonna say cats module. Um, and now we can, we have, I guess, imported in that cat module with the single resolver that has a hello query. So now I'm going to start up the application and make sure everything works. And if this works, if we go to slash GraphQL now, we should see a GraphQL playground. You also notice when I started this up, if we click on schema.gql that just got generated, uh, we can see our uh, GraphQL schema. And again, we specified what the name of that is here. All right, so let's head over here and look close 3000 slash GraphQL. All right, so we have our playground and I'm gonna say hello and we get hello back, awesome. So that is how we can integrate GraphQL in. Now let's see how we can integrate uh, MongoDB and we're gonna be using the Mongoose package. Now Nest.js has a special integration with Mongoose that we're gonna be using. So we're gonna do it the Nest.js way. All right, so let's copy this. I'm under the techniques Mongo section and we're installing Nest.js Mongoose package in Mongoose. All right, and then we're just gonna be following this. So you'll notice we're adding a new import to our application module. And oh, it's not auto completing for me, so we'll just get this import directly. And this is the connection string to the MongoDB database. Uh, this will work just fine for me but you can change this if you want to point to something else besides just localhost and if you want a different database besides it called nest. All right, so I guess that sets up our connection. Next up, we can create a schema. I'm just gonna use the schema that they're using, this cat schema. And we're gonna go inside of cats here and I'm gonna say cats.schema.ts. Paste this in. And so we have a name, age, and breed. And this is just regular mongoose. We're not doing any Nest.js stuff here. All right, so next up is setting up our cats module. So we already have this set up, but we're gonna add this mongoose.for feature thing. Uh, honestly, not exactly sure exactly what this does. I'm assuming it has something to do with being able to access, oops. I'm assuming this allows us to access this cat schema inside the service class, which we're about to create. So import that and import our cat schema. All right, so we uh, wanna basically be able to access our cat schema inside of our resolver and be able to create cats. And so the way you would abstract that, or I guess set it up in next, Nest.js, not Next.js, is create what's called a service class, which will access this. So that is what we're gonna create next. If we scroll down, they have a cat service we can copy. Come over here, cats.service.ts. Now this is, I guess, a injectable class and we can access the cat model 
I'm guessing, or schema because we added it to our import here. Um, and we need to create a cat interface and this create cat DTO. Basically, these are just TypeScript interfaces that describe uh, what types the cat has. Um, and we'll see we're creating two functions, create and find all. Uh, and basically, we could put this logic inside of our resolver if we wanted to. This is just a layer of abstraction that I believe makes it easier to test. Um, and this seems to be the Nest.js way of doing things. Um, and you can see this is just a wrapper around taking the arguments for creating a cat and creating a cat model. Okay, so let's go ahead and create these two folders and uh, the stuff inside of it. So let's start with interfaces. So interfaces, inside of interfaces, we're gonna create a cat.interface. And we'll come over here. And I went ahead and just went to their GitHub sample to be able to copy this and paste this over here. And then we're gonna create that DOT thing as well. So that was, oh, we don't even need to come back here, but it's this path. And this has the .ts extension. Do you notice everything they kind of they have cats and then what it is and then .ts at the end. So schema, resolver, module, interface, DTO. I'm actually not sure what DTO stands for, to be honest. Uh, but if we go to cats and grab that. And we're going to add some stuff to this later, but uh, this is what we're going to start with. So now our service should be happy with us. It is and we can now access this inside of our cats resolver. Well, we actually need to add an import or a proprietor for it first. So cats service, and now we can access in our resolver over here. So Nest.js can handle injecting this for us. So all we have to say here is cats service, and we're gonna say cats service, and now we can access it here. So let's create a new query, which we're going to call cats, and just going to return all our cats. So here we're going to say this dot cat service dot find all. And so what this is going to do is it's going to return an array of cats. So I'm going to use the create cat DTO as my return type. Now we are using type GraphQL here, so we can turn this into a input type, or sorry, just an object type. Oops, it's my VS Code lagging object type and this is coming from type GraphQL it looks like it's importing from the wrong place there we go and we can make these fields and now I'm gonna get rid of the read only. Actually, I don't know if read only is gonna mess anything up. I'll keep it for now, I don't think it will. Now, uh, strings can be automatically inferred. Number cannot, because it does not know whether the GraphQL type of this should be an integer or a double or a float. So in this case, it's going to be an int and that gets imported from type GraphQL. All right, so that is how we do cats the query. So we're just calling find all. And if we look at our service, we can see what find all does. It's calling our cat model or our schema. It's calling dot find and it's just executing that. All right, let's do what the create one will be next. So we'll copy this. This is going to be a mutation. And something I noticed is, I think these are just exported from type GraphQL. So I don't think it matters if we import it from the nest GraphQL or type GraphQL, but I'm gonna import from up here. All right, so here we're gonna say create cat. Now we're gonna to have to take some arguments because we're gonna be calling the create cat. And this requires an age, a breed, and a name. So I'm gonna create a new args. And again, I'm just gonna import this from nest. And we're gonna say, I'm gonna call it input. And we're gonna create a new type for this. So I guess I'm gonna call it cat input. And here we're gonna say new folder, or I'm gonna say new file and say inputs slash cat 
dot input dot ts export class cat input and this is just going to basically have all the same fields but instead of an object type it's going to be an input type and again everything's coming from type graphql here um, same as we did inside our dto all right so let's import the cat input and we're just going to pass that to create nice all right so now we have our create cat and our cats and you'll notice how this works is basically we're just calling our cat service and passing in any arguments that we need so let's go test this out so i'm going to do start up my server and we can come back to our playground now i already wrote out the query but this is what it looks like we have our create cat here i'm going to create a bob 2 and he's going to be six years old um, one thing I forgot to add that I wanted to add was an ID field. So let's add that. That's going to be on the return type or the object type, create cat DTO. So field, this is going to be an ID. It's going to be of type string. And the GraphQL type is going to be an ID. And so we want to explicitly say that. All right. So now uh, go ahead and run this. Expect it iterable. I think I just messed up the type. Yeah, so we don't actually want to return an array here. I want to return that. And input ID is missing. Oh yeah, I messed that up, didn't I? Because I don't want my create over here. Um, so my create cat DTO is not really the right type anymore. So I'm gonna name this create input, or sorry, cat input. And use that instead of the DTO that I used over here. This is really just the return type that we're using. This is what the cat looks like. I can even rename this if I want uh, to just cat type. So I uh, I did F2 to do that. F2 and then you just retype it and then hit enter and I'll rename it everywhere. So now we have a cat type, our array of cat types and then a single cat type. So we want to return from creating a cat. All right, so let's create a cat. Our Bob two cat, and now we can create all our cat, or sorry, view our cats by running this. And you can see I created a cat earlier, and it looks like I created Bob two twice. Nice. All right, so that is basically the same server that we built yesterday or a few days ago, um, but now this is the Nest JS version. The main difference I see with it is it seems to be a lot more boilerplate. And this is immediately obvious for a small application like we're building here. Um, I think this is probably something that is has a very nice structure as your application grows. And as you have like a very large project, I feel like this is probably a really nice way to structure it. But it feels very, very um, kind of complex and kind of boilerplate-ish just for a very small project like this. Just for... A, just like everything is kind of split up into its own classes, kind of reminds me of Java-esque. Uh, but overall, I think it, it looks pretty nice, and I'm excited to try more stuff with Nest.js. Anyway, guys, all this code is up on GitHub if you want to check it out. Um, and yeah, expect some more Nest.js videos in the future.